And as the war in Iraq approaches the fifth year mark, President Bush waxes romantic about the war in Afghanistan. Bush listened to U.S. military and civilian personnel voice their concern over continuing problems in Afghanistan, where U.S. forces still number 29,000, about half of them part of the NATO presence there. Deadly fighting with the Taliban drags on, and convincing local governments to spurn the poppy drug trade is difficult. But President Bush, in the video conference, said, quote, I must say I am a little envious. If I were slightly younger and not employed here, I think it would be a fantastic experience to be on the front lines of helping this young democracy succeed. It must be exciting for you. In some ways, romantic. In some ways, you know, confronting danger. You're really making history and thanks, end quote. Veterans of the Afghan war swiftly responded, votevets.org collecting reactions like this one, quote, I didn't feel like there was anything romantic in not seeing my daughter grow up in watching Afghan children starve to death and explaining repeated deployment extensions to my soldiers. No, Mr. President, there's nothing romantic about being sent on an important mission and not being given the tools to accomplish it. Let's call in the executive director of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, as well as the author of Chasing Ghosts, Paul Rykoff. Paul, nice to see you in person. Good to be with you. My well, pleasure. Well, first of all, I just have to get your reactions to the president's comments. They're absurd. I mean, uh, serving in a combat zone uh, can be exciting. It's dangerous. It's terrifying. Romantic is not the word I would use. And I don't think anybody who's actually been there would use yeah. the word romantic. That's the type of language you hear from someone who's never been in combat. So I think the president is continuing to show how he really doesn't understand the human component of this war. Uh, a combat veteran understands that people are serving 15-month tours. Uh, we've got uh, over 500,000 people who've been deployed more than once. There's a tremendous toll on our folks, and romantic is a terrible choice of words. Well, let's talk about someone who is fighting right now. General Petraeus, he's preparing to testify in front of Congress next month. Could you interpret his remarks for us? I, I, I'm confused yeah. by them. I think he's downgrading expectations. Is that what's I, th going I, think on? He, I think he's recognizing that we have had some security gains. Violence has gone down, but that's not going to make the Iraqis get along. Mm -hmm. You've still got these tremendously deep divisions, and you've got other factors. I, I don't think we can alone credit the surge with the reduction in violence. Maktad al Assadr is on a big pause right now, and if he decides to take his family off that pause button mm. and reignite the violence, we're going to see a dramatic increase in what's happening inside Iraq. So it's a cauldron. It's incredibly fragile, and it can tip in either direction at any point. So is there an argument to be made for the extension of the surge? I, I think there is. I mean, you could say, okay, let's, let's, let's see it out for another couple of months, mm -hmm. but we have to be honest with the American people and tell them how far we're going to extend it. We keep pushing back the goalpost over and over again, and at some point we've got to think about what we're doing to the military. If we continue to have 20 brigades in Iraq for the next five years, President Bush might get his chance. He might have to fight on the front lines. Maybe he saw the images of Prince Harry, and, and that caused him to He's wax inspired. romantic here. <laughs> but if we keep running our military in the ground, we're going to need a lot of folks on the front lines. We saw Admiral Fallon step down this week. He spoke to Esquire magazine. I want to get his words right, so I'm going to read them here. He said a war with Iran would be, quote, ill-advised action. All right, he spoke out, stepped down, resigned. General Petraeus going to have to testify in front of Congress. Uh, c can he deliver stark remarks if they're perhaps not friendly to the administration's view of how things are going? I think he has an obligation to do that. He has an obligation to the troops serving in Iraq, to the American people, uh, and, and to his position. He has to be frank, he has to be candid, and, and, and tell us exactly what's happening on the ground. And at the same time, we have to pay attention to what Ambassador Crocker is going to say. Mm. That's the, the other side of this equation that never gets any attention, and that's the political progress. So it's not just one component that's going to achieve or, or fail to achieve peace in Iraq. It's going to be the military complemented by diplomatic, economic, and political options. Before we let you go, I know mm -hmm. there's something that's very important to you, the status of the latest GI Bill. Yeah, GI Bill is moving forward, but right now we only have 44 co-sponsors in the Senate. We need a new GI Bill. The GI Bill right now covers only about 40 percent of the co cost of education in America. It's not what our grandfathers had after World War II. So we need a new GI Bill. We need it now. And one of the presidential candidates, Senator McCain, is not yet signed on. So we need pressure on him. Get him on board. Let's get this done in 2008. Paul Rykoff of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Thanks for coming by the studio. Thank you, Allison.